since I was little, I was always into art. I wanted to either draw comics or work for Pixar. And as I grew older, like in high school, I wanted to draw like uh, anime comic books, like manga, and move to Japan and just do all that nerdy stuff. It just like kind of like switched when I found that I was undocumented. We're at Playa Vista right now, getting ready for my first ever solo show. This is an art in residency. It's been over a month now. And I've been creating just murals, stencils, uh, new pieces. The big day is April 13. It's two weeks away and I still have to do, create like new pieces. I created three murals so far and I'm creating new pieces, but I have a long way to go. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous that this is my first ever solo show. It's like planning your own birthday party and hoping people show up. <laughs> so I hope it goes well. I was a pretty shy and quiet kid when I was little. I was a good student. I was just really slow. <laughs> I was mostly in remedial classes. So I just process information slower than everybody else. And as I grew older, I, it turns out I'm not really book smart, but more like very hands-on. The earliest memory of me like really getting into art was in, in the first grade when my teacher introduced us to Vincent van Gogh. She put out five paintings of his and told us to recreate one of them. And I remember the one that I recreated was Starry Night. And when I did that and she talked more about Vincent van Gogh, I just, I don't know, I, I think that's when I really fell in love with art. Me and Sarah would always just sit around and just draw, paint, whatever, make funny cartoons. Ever since I can remember, we were always just drawing. Sometimes, instead of like paying attention class or doing my, my homework and stuff, I'll just doodle on the side of my work. Sometimes I wouldn't even turn in my paperwork because I thought the drawing on the paperwork was so cool and I didn't want to like turn it in, so I kept it. <laughs> I do art because it's more of a meditation thing for me. It's like when I get to do art, like I zone out, like I don't have to worry about anything negative in the world. I could just sit down, create and just be in the zone and just let go, like do art. And as I got older with like being undocumented and not being able to have any control over my life, I just like, I felt like that was the one thing I was able to control.
I knew that I was born in Mexico, but I didn't know I was undocumented. I was just a baby. I got here when I was one. I just grew up like a normal American kid. I went to school. English feels like my first language because I'm pretty bad at Spanish. When I was in high school, I wanted to work. I wanted to get my driver's license like everybody else, but that was something I couldn't do because I asked my parents if I could get my social security number so I could start doing that. And that's when they told me that I was undocumented. My dad came here with a work visa and him and my mom came here and they had my brother and sister. And then once my dad was done, like they moved back to Mexico thinking that they were gonna just live there. And that's when they had me. And after that, my dad got another job offer out here. So they came back. My dad started putting the paperwork into the process to become residents. But the person that was helping us out, the lawyer, actually messed up. They completely canceled all of our paperwork, my mom, my dad's, and mine. My parents told me not to worry because they plan on waiting until my sister was 21 so she can sponsor us so that way we can become residents. So my sister turned 21, but when she turned 21, I turned 18 and I became an adult, <laughs> which meant I was no longer eligible to be sponsored. I'm the youngest in my family and the only one that's undocumented. Everyone else is a citizen. I went to a lawyer, talked to them, and they told me I had three options. Either get married, go back to Mexico for 10 years, take the penalty, or the third, wait until Obama passed DACA. So this is 2010. <laughs> DACA wasn't passed until 2012. It was two years of me being depressed. Just that feeling of not being able to do anything. Yeah, I tried finding under the table jobs, which was horrible. I couldn't find anything, especially where I grew up. I would wake up every morning feeling like I didn't wanna, like, I woke up not wanting to die, but I also didn't want to live because I felt like I was trapped. Um, with those two years, I just decided, you know what, I'm tired of not doing anything with my life. YouTube and art was always my escape. What I started doing was I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos. I started learning from there. I started creating at home with all the time I had. I started filming my, my process, uploading it. Like, I have nothing else to lose. So why not just go for like this crazy dream of becoming a freelance artist and YouTuber? And I just said, well, it's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> Started just like constantly posting, posting it on every social media as I, I could. That's when I started seeing that people really started enjoying my YouTube channel and started subscribing and it was just crazy because that was something just, just for me. And from there I started noticing like, this is cool, this could kind of go somewhere like in a weird way even though I wasn't getting paid for it. I just thought of it of, oh this is cool, I created my own little, my little job since I can't get a job, I created my own. I did that for two years, and then finally, President Obama passed DACA.
right away I applied. I got my permit and from there, right when I got my social security number, I got my driver's license. I was able to monetize my YouTube channel. I was able to like get a bank account <laughs> and a PayPal account and was able to sell my art. My life changed. I saved up enough money and I was able to move to LA. I met so many amazing people here. I noticed that nobody here really cares that I'm undocumented. I felt like they were seeing me as an artist first and everything else second. And that's what I've always wanted to be known for. I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. When I heard the Trump administration like wanting to rescind DACA, I, I got scared. If they rescinded it, then I would lose everything. I would lose everything I worked so hard for. I would go back to being 100% undocumented and the government knows where I'm at. So I was scared what was gonna happen. Was I gonna just look out for ice outside of my door every day? I was wanted to go back to hiding, not talking about it and not telling anybody. I have some family members that did vote for Trump. So it, that has kind of just struck me the wrong way, but it, you know, I don't know. I, I still don't know how to feel about that. I voted for Donald Trump because in my opinion, he was the lesser of two evils. I didn't like any of them. I'm an automated systems analyst, so I have a wide range of IT experience. One of those being network security. So I have a lot of trust in WikiLeaks and what they do, and I do, I do support WikiLeaks. And the stuff that WikiLeaks have put out for Hillary Clinton deleting her emails and all the shady stuff that's going on in the back end, as a collective, I saw her as a bad person. I'm by no means a Trump supporter, but I voted for him because, again, lesser of two evils in my opinion. You know, was that a right thing? Was that, was that a wrong thing? Um, I mean, others would say that it was a bad thing because of what's happening now, and you know, I, 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 I accept that. But at that point in time, I made a judgment call based on the information that I had. Uh, but yeah, it's very unsettling. It's, 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 it's not easy. Hey, so uh, how do you feel that your brother voted for Trump? I think he's an idiot. <laughs> but he's my brother. He's family. I'm always going to love him still. We just don't talk about politics anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do my biometrics. So they're gonna like take my photo and scan my fingerprints. And so, yeah, I gotta do this every two years to renew my permit. I'm happy that I'm, like, I'm gonna get my permit for another two years, but this is just like, every time I go, go do my biometrics, I just like, it just like a weird constant reminder every two years that, that I'm, not, I'm not a citizen just yet. Uh, it, it kind of bums me out. Uh, like, yeah, I'm like really grateful that I'm getting my permit for another two years, but also just kind of, I don't know, just puts me in a weird mood. <laughs> um, so take a step back so I can get the full. Uh, no, 
Right. So I always try not to be so political, like in my art, on my channel. I never wanted to be a political. It wasn't until it started becoming more of a bigger thing that it started like eating up inside me. And there's a lot of people out there that don't have a voice. And I felt like I should try to do something. I went to my first rally, and to be honest, I've always stayed away from rallies. I just was always so scared of that kind of stuff. I was nervous. Like, it felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. Like, I saw these people, like, just normal people, just everyday people, just being there, being more involved. People who weren't even undocumented, like helping out, and I just felt horrible because I'm over here, undocumented, having a voice online and not using it. And it kind of just made me feel like, what am I doing? Like, I should be helping, I should be up there, I should be doing something. That's when I decided I wanted to do a coming out video about me being undocumented and being under DACA. I feel like I have a really good like support system on YouTube, but when it comes to Facebook, I think that's a whole different story. You know, everybody on Facebook has a pretty strong opinion about things, so I think that's what I'm more nervous about. Just, well, one, the hate. <laughs> of course, it's gonna freak me out. I don't know, I've never been this vulnerable on YouTube ever. Like, I'm always hiding behind a camera and showing just my hands and sometimes my face. And I think I have like probably like three or four videos where I'm actually talking to my audience and it's just like it's weird to go from that to just hey guys like I'm just gonna open up <laughs> you know this is scary good thing my internet sucks because I could like <laughs> procrastinate on this <laughs> sorry I smile so much when like there's serious moments it's not me thinking it's funny or anything I just I smile when like I don't know how to react to things. That's basically me <laughs> every day of my life. <laughs> I think I'm ready. <laughs> I've been talking about this for four years now. I'm finally gonna do it. I just gotta press the save change button now. And uh, it's gonna go live. It's ready to go. I have my thumbnails, I have my tags, description, title. Videos all uploaded. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna click it now. Yeah, it's live now. Hey guys, um, there's something I've been wanting to share with you guys for the longest time. Uh, some of you guys might not like it. Some of you guys might not approve of it. Some of you guys are gonna support it, but this is my story and this is I wanted to share with you guys because it's now or never and I'm undocumented. Oh, I feel great now. I feel amazing. <laughs> like, people are sharing it, like, friends are sharing it. I'm seeing it even on, like, Instagram stories, people sharing that. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm just glad that I don't have to hide this anymore. This is my way of shedding some light on this issue.
When I put it on my YouTube channel, the response was amazing. I got so much love. Like, I didn't get any hate on my YouTube channel at all. And I got a lot of private messages from people, people that are under DACA and just messaging me saying like, hey, I'm scared too. I'm under DACA and I'm too scared to tell people that, that I'm under it and I sometimes lie to people that I was born here instead of Mexico and or another country and I've gotten just like a bunch of love of people just saying like I'm in the same boat as you and I'm so happy that you came out because I don't feel alone anymore and that's when I read those messages I'm like this is a reason why I did this because like I want to show people that they're not alone and there is a way out and there is a way to like find an outlet and not feel stuck. Work is amazing. I feel like I've been like nonstop doing commissions and I'm finally getting like murals of my own. So this is like the first time ever that I get to do my own mural. It's a collaboration with Gabe Gold. So he did the background and I did the, the 50 girls and the guy in the back. And it just, it feels so cool. Cause like I got to spray paint my name in the corner for the first time ever on a mural. So like that just makes me really happy. This year, just I've been gaining a bu bunch of like more opportunities to create my own art on walls. It's been 10 plus years since she's been doing this and her art is just getting even better. I have friends and family that are just amazed. Her work is, is very strong. What's coming next is just going to get bigger and bigger from here. Adopt the Arts with uh, Shepherd Fairy, Moby, Kate Man, The Crystal Method, and a bunch of other artists. This is my first prints ever, like, I even got to like sign them and everything. I never had like prints and I told myself this year I was going to do it and I would never have thought it would be Eminem. <laughs> and the video went like super viral, it was crazy. I thought it was like slowing down and everything, but then later Eminem himself <laughs> posted the video on his Instagram, which is like super crazy. I don't know, it's so crazy. Like I've been getting like followers like crazy. Like at the start of this month, when I did this piece, I think I had like 35,000 followers and now I'm up to like 82.8K followers on Instagram. These are all the DMs asking about the Eminem piece. It's like so much, I can't, I can't like go through all of them. Like I feel like I need to hire somebody to like help me go through them. And then um, 
these are my emails asking about the M&M piece. So I gotta go through those too. So I'm a little stressed out, but I'm really excited. Like, I don't know, this, this is cool. <laughs> With all this attention, it's making me want to do more for this community. Because I, I don't want anybody to be in that situation where I was at, where I was depressed and I had nothing and I felt very alone. And I want to be able to like give back and I don't want anybody to feel like that again. We're in Western Elementary School and I'm about to present for Career Day here um, to, the, to the kids. When I was your age, I was really into drawing, coloring, painting, and as I grew older, I knew that I wanted to be uh, an artist, but I didn't know what kind of artist I wanted to be. I really liked YouTube as well, so when I got out of school, I decided I would combine YouTube and art together and make it into a career. You guys want to watch the Fortnite video? Yeah! Any questions? Uh, after everything's done with, yes. <laughs> if you guys are interested in becoming a YouTuber, the first thing you guys need to learn is you can't focus on numbers. You can't focus on getting money. You guys just have to have fun and enjoy yourself and just create what you guys want to create. Don't focus on the money. That will come later in life. So for now, just have fun with it. It became full circle that like I think I was in I think I was in third grade too like I saw this uh, this presenter at, on career day when I was little and she was a book illustrator and she drew like these like rhinos surfing she taught us how to draw it and I remember that like always stuck with me that just seeing that on stage and I was like I want to do that. I want to be an artist one day and I want to be able to go up on stage or I want to go up to a classroom and like talk about what I do and hopefully inspire some of the kids one day. One, two, three! Oh! I want it! So just being able to do this finally, I was like, this is so cool. I'm on the other side now. <laughs> one, two, three.
How am I feeling? I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm super stoked. This is something I've been dreaming about since I moved to LA. And I always talk about how I want to do a solo show and I've been wanting to do it right. I had other opportunities to do a solo show, but I felt like I wasn't ready. And I feel like I'm ready to show my work now. I don't want to be known as the undocumented artist or the woman artist or anything else artist. I want to be known as just artist. And being undocumented is just another obstacle I just need to overcome in my life. But until that time comes, I'm going to keep making my art. <laughs>